Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing what are stem cells, what are the differences between embryonic and adult stem cells, what are plant stem cells, and finally a summary. So in our video on cell differentiation, we talked about the different types of cells. Now we're going to talk about stem cells. But what are stem cells? Well, the definition of a stem cell is given as an undifferentiated cell of an organism, which is capable of giving rise to many more cells of the same type, and from which certain other cells can arise from differentiation. Now, don't worry if this sounds a little bit complicated. I'm going to explain what all of this means in this video. So let's start with being undifferentiated. Well, undifferentiated means they are not specialised. Actually, stem cells differentiate to make up all the cells in the body. For example, in this diagram, you can see that the stem cells turn into lots of other different cells, and these include liver cells, blood cells, and muscle cells, as well as lots of other different types of cells in the body. Stem cells can also divide by mitosis to give cells that are still undifferentiated and these cells can still differentiate to produce all the cells in your body. And these stem cells are used for growth, repair and development. For example, stem cells can produce new red blood cells after you've had a cut. So there's not actually just one type of stem cell, there are two, and we're going to look at the differences between embryonic and adult stem cells in this video. So we've mentioned before how there are two different types. So the first type is called embryonic, and embryonic stem cells are in the embryos. An embryo is just an organism at an early stage of development before they're born. And this is where embryonic stem cells come from. And these cells are really important as they can differentiate into all the cells of the body. This means that all the cells of your body only come from a few stem cells. These stem cells divide and differentiate again and again until they form a whole organism. Now let's talk about the second type of stem cell, adult stem cell. Well, adult stem cells are found in a few different places, and these include the brain, the skin, and the bone marrow. So stem cells in the brain help produce the cells you need for normal brain function. The stem cells in your skin help produce skin cells needed for repair if you get hurt. And stem cells in the bone marrow help produce red blood cells. So a key difference between these adult stem cells compared to embryonic stem cells is that adult stem cells can only differentiate into some of the cells in your body, but definitely not all of them. For example, adult stem cells in the bone marrow can still form blood cells. And that means if you lose some blood, your bone marrow can still produce red blood cells. Another difference between embryonic and adult stem cells is that adult stem cells stop dividing when the organism is fully grown. And it can start again with disease or damage, and that's because it requires the production of new cells for repair. So we've talked a lot about stem cells we found in animals, but plants also have stem cells, and these stem cells are called meristems. So meristems are important because they're the only cells that can divide in the plant. And that means that plants can continuously grow throughout their lives. So where are these stem cells? Well, the meristems are in the roots and the shoots. And this is because they're the only parts of the plants that actively grow. So in this diagram, this is the shoot of the plant. And these are the meristems in the shoot. And that helps it grow upwards. This is the root of the plant. And the meristems in the root help the root grow outwards so it can find nutrients and mineral ions as well as water for the plant to grow healthily. Meristems in plant cells are actually adapted so they can divide continuously throughout the plant's life. And this is because they have things like a thin wall. So compared to this diagram, the cell wall would be very thin. They also have small vacuoles and they don't have any chloroplasts as they don't photosynthesize. So the important feature of having a thin cell wall is that it's not rigid so the cell can still divide throughout the plant's life. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. 
Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.